Hello students, how are you all doing? I hope all of you are doing really well. In today's class, we are going to continue reading the chapter, My Childhood, right? In the previous class, we have seen that how the new teacher could not tolerate a Hindu priest's son sitting with a Muslim boy. So he asked APJ Abdul Kalam, to go and sit on the back bench. This incident made both A.P. Abdul Kalam and Ramanatha Shastri very sad. They were very depressed. So after school, they went home and told their parents about the incident, about what has happened in the school today. And from now this point, we will continue reading the story and see what action has been taken against the teacher. So are you excited to know what happens next? Okay, so let's get started. Lakshmana Sastri summoned the teacher and in our presence told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children. So we are, here we have a picture of Lakshmana Sastri. I told you he was the high priest of the Rameshwaram temple. He was the father of Ramanadha Shastri. So he summoned, summoned means to call. So he called the teacher and in the presence of the students who are here, the students, A.P. Abdul Kalam and Ramana Shastri, he told that he should not spread this poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children. So the students, the, the children are very innocent. Whatever we will feed them with, they will learn it and they will remember it throughout their lifetime. So if we will teach them good things, they will remember that. If we will spread among them the, you know, the poison of social inequality. If you will feed them with communal, uh, communal intolerance, they will think in the same way. They will remember it throughout their life. That's why the uh, he is saying that, Lakshmana Sastri is saying that the teacher should not do this because the child, they were very innocent. We should teach them the right things. He bluntly asks the teacher to either apologize or quit the school and the island. Not only did the teacher regret his behavior, but the strong sense of conviction Lakshmana Sastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher. So he bluntly, bluntly means when you say something without trying to be polite or without considering how the other people will feel if I say so, you know. So, like uh, our friends, they also come to us and they very bluntly, they say, oh, I think you should stop eating and start dieting. You have gained a lot of weight. So, our friends also do that, right? They bluntly ask us to do something or not to do something. They don't care how we are going to react or how we are going to, you know, take them or take their opinion. So, here, he was not trying to be polite. He very sharply, very bluntly said that, Either you apologize, you say sorry to these kids or you quit the school and the island. You can, you can just leave, you can go. You can quit the school and you can quit the island. Then not only did he regret, the teacher regret his behavior, but uh, you know, a strong sense of conviction. Conviction means a strong opinion or belief. A strong sense of conviction, Lakshmana Sastri conveyed, has reformed this young teacher. He was ultimately reformed. He, ch he changed his thinking. He changed his belief. And he knew that what he had done was wrong. And he should not continue doing that. On the whole, the small society of Rameshwaram was very rigid in terms of segregation of social group, of different social groups. So the small society of Rameshwaram was very rigid, very strict in terms of segregation. Means separation you know, so they very strictly followed the you know rules of you know uh, uh, 
separation that we have social rankings we have uh, brahmins sh kshatriyas we have shudras so they very believed in these things and they knew that they cannot mingle together they cannot come together so they believed in you know separation they believed in separating people based on their caste creed religion and what not however my science teacher shiva subramani ayer do an orthodox brahmin with a very conservative wife was something of a rebel so uh, though like um, uh, the so small society of rameshwaram followed the rules uh, and they were very orthodox they believed in separation of uh, people based on their caste and creed but his teacher his science teacher shiva subramani ayer he was something of a rebel rebel means when you think against what other people think you know so he 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 belonged to a very orthodox brahmin family but still he was a rebel he did not believe in segregation of people he believed in harmony okay communal harmony and the uh, wife of the science teacher shivra subramanya here she was very conservative you know she had very uh, traditional feelings traditional uh, beliefs okay okay he did his best to break the social barriers so that people from varying backgrounds could mingle easily he used to spend hours with me and would say kalam i want you to develop so that you are on par with the highly educated people of the big cities so the science teacher he did not believe in all these social barriers and he tried his best you know to break these barriers so that people from varying backgrounds from different religions different caste different creed different color they could come together they could mingle together M mingle means interact with each other you know living in harmony living in peace together he used to spend hours with me and say kalam i want you to develop so that you are on par with the highly educated people of the big cities so, so the science teacher shiva subramanya ayer had a lot of belief had a lot of faith on dr apj abdul kalam as he used to tell him from the very beginning that i want you to develop i want you to grow so that one day you are on par with the highly educated people par means at the same level okay so uh, he had really seen something great in apj abdul kalam and he used to motivate him he used to set you know uh, he used to set bar for him and used to say this is not the end for you i want you to grow i want you to see on the same level with highly educated people of the big cities and we all know apj abdul kalam not just he came on par with the highly educated people he surpassed them like we all uh, you know we all will agree with it that the, the pinnacle that he has reached you know the science teacher must be very proud of apj abdul kalam one day he invited me to his home for a meal his wife was horrified at the idea of a muslim boy being invited to dine in her ritually pure kitchen so one day his science teacher he invited him to his home for having a meal but his wife did not really like this idea she was horrified with how a muslim boy is going to have dinner with us or you know how he has invited a muslim boy in our ritually pure kitchen ritually pure means a kitchen where which has been kept protected from all outside influences for the observances of religion means no muslim boy has entered her kitchen before now the pure kitchen will not be pure anymore it will become impure according to his wife's idea she refused to serve me in her kitchen so you can see like she was really an orthodox she was she was really a conservative wife she refused to serve apj abdul kalam in her kitchen thinking thinking that it will become impure shiva subramanya ayer was not perturbed not did he get angry with his wife but instead 
served me with his own hands and sat down beside me to eat his meal so uh, looking at his wife's reaction the science teacher shiva subramanya ayer he was not perturbed perturbed means he was not upset neither he was angry with his wife but instead he ser- he served apj abdul kalam food with his own hands and he sat down beside him to eat his meal you can see in the picture that how they are having the meal together right his wife watched us from behind the kitchen door i wondered whether she had observed any difference in the way i ate rice drank water or cleaned the floor after the meal so now the wife the, the wife of the science teacher was watching them you know from behind the kitchen door and apj abdul kalam he was wondering has she observed any difference in the way i was eating the food i was eating the rice i was drinking water or clean the floor after the meal so the apj abdul kalam was really surprised that you know no matter from which religion do you belong right which caste do you belong people have the same way of eating food same way of drinking water and they clean the floor in the same way so what is the point of differentiation why is she segregating me he was really surprised by the uh, you know reaction of the science teacher's wife when i was leaving his house shiva subramanya ayer invited me to join him for dinner again the next weekend so now when he was about to leave the house the teacher invited him again for dinner next weekend observing my hesitation he told me not to get upset saying once you decide to change the system such problems have to be confronted so now uh, when he uh, invited him again for the dinner obviously anybody would also show hesitation so apj abdul kalam was showing some kind of hesitation hesitation you know like a doubt or reluctance so he was hesitating so uh, to say yes and why he was hesitating because he was not treated very well by the science teacher's wife so he was not really happy with the idea of coming back again for dinner but the science teacher said don't get upset because once you decide to change the system in what system we are talking about you know the caste system the religion system if you have decided to change it you have to confront such problems you have to face such such problems don't be upset don't don't be angry with my wife's reaction so he was really you know uh, uh, he had that will to change the system he did not get disturbed by anyone's reaction around him that was the level of dedication of the science teacher when i visited his house the next week Shiva Subramanya Iyer's wife took me inside her kitchen and served me food with her own own hands. So how beautiful you can see the picture. This picture is such a is giving us such a strong message that how you know there was a change that has taken place in in his um, teacher's uh, wife. You know when she was thinking if I admit a Muslim guy into my kitchen. my kitchen will become impure and within a week there has been a transformation there has been a good change do you know she now allowed apj abdul kalam to come into her kitchen sit down and you know she was serving him food with her own hands this is a really you know uh, <laughs> it's um, since she was very conservative it has been really a tough time for the shiva subramanya you know for him to convince the wife but it's great that she has changed her thoughts changed her beliefs and now she has allowed apj abdul kalam to enter the kitchen this uh, you know this should be the level of dedication you know will will power that we have to face it and we have to change people's think thinking how do how do they think why do believe why do they have belief in such uh, um system 
it's very good it is giving a very strong message and we should also learn that none of us should discriminate anyone based on their caste or color or creed we all belong to the you know we are all sons and daughters of god okay let's continue then the second world war was over and india's freedom was imminent indians will build their own india declared gandhi ji so the second world war was over and the freedom of india was imminent imminent means about to happen okay india got the freedom and gandhi ji declared that indians will build their own india the whole country was filled with an unprecedented uh, optimism i asked my father for permission to leave rameshwaram and study at the district headquarters in ramanathpuram so the whole country was filled with unprecedented means never done or known before so this optimism was you know never experienced before they were about to get the freedom the country the whole country was very optimistic now ram ram this uh, uh, apj abdul kalam is asking permission from his father that he wants to leave rameshwaram he wants to go to district headquarters in ramanathapuram and continue his studies from there he told me as if thinking aloud abul i know you have to go away to grow does the seagull not fly across the sun alone and without a nest so you can see how you know you such practical thinking displayed by his father is saying that i know you have to go out you have to go away to grow to become a better person does the seagull not fly across the sun seagull is a sea bird which flies alone without any nest so you also have to go out to grow and obviously you will go out and study as much as you like he quoted khalil gibran to my hesitant mother your children are not your children they are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself so the mother was hesitant you know like you know mothers are really emotional fathers are known to be a figure of they are very practical but mothers they are very emotional they have that soft corner and uh, they don't really like the idea of their children going out to study i mean it's not that they don't want to grow it's not that they don't want their children to you know rise heights but it's very painful f- for them for mothers to you know to separate from their children so definitely apj abdul kalam's mother was hesitant she she was having a very tough uh, you know moment she her heart was not allowing that apj should go out and study all the mothers are like that only you know they're very very attached to the child fathers also are atta- attached to the child but they think in a more practical way they are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself so he's quoting uh, the father you know and try uh, he's try maybe he's trying to convince the mother that you know, they are not your children okay they are not your children they are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself they come through you but not from you you may give them your love but not your thoughts for they have their own thoughts so the father is trying to convince the mother and you know maybe you know emotionally soothe the mother that they have come through you but they have not come from you you may give them your love your but you cannot give them your thoughts they have their own thoughts they have to go out they have to build their own life right so these lines of the father is really very heart touching and heartwarming we see how practical his father was and how he was trying to convince the mother that let apj abdul kalam go and make a life of his own so with these lines the chapter comes to an end so the quote that apj abdul kalam's father has quoted to his mother is uh, taken from khalil gibran's poem on children so i really hope that please all of you really go and uh, read this poem 
which is really heart touching and you will love it okay so students we have completed reading the story my childhood my childhood is an extract from apj abdul kalam's autobiography wings of fire you have seen students that how beautifully kalam sir has described his childhood he has talked about people events and experiences that he had during his childhood students from this story we have learned that how experiences shapes our life you know great values of life gets instilled in us by the people and experiences we have in our life this is such an inspirational story for all of us you know and i'm very sure that we all will learn something from the story and will take it forward in our lives which will benefit us and will be of great value for all of us okay so with these thoughts in my mind i would like to end this chapter here and we will discuss the question answers given in your ncert book okay so let's discuss the chapter uh, the question answers the first question the first part of this question is answer these questions in one or two sentences each okay the first question where was abdul kalam's house i'm sure all of you really know the answer abdul kalam's house was on the mosque street in rameshwaram next question what do you think dina mani is the name of give a reason for your answer so i told you right dina mani was the name of the newspaper dina mani is the name of a newspaper because kalam says that when his brother in law samsuddin would tell his stories of the war he would later try to trace it in the headlines of dina mani so from the word headlines we can say that dina mani is the name of a newspaper who were abdul kalam's school friends what did they later become do you remember the name students i told you right do you remember yes ramananda shastri aravindam and shiva prakashan were his school friends ramananda shastri became a priest of the rameshwaram temple aravindam went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims Shiva Prakashan became a catering contractor for the Southern Railways. Very good. Okay, the next question: How did Abdul Kalam earn his first wages? Do you remember how? And he was still taking after fifty years. Also, he was still feeling pride of that moment. Abdul Kalam earned his first wages by catching bundles of the newspapers thrown out from the moving train. on the rameshwaram road between rameshwaram and dhanushkodi and distributing them so you you know why this incident had happened why he had to why the uh, newspaper bundles had to be thrown out of the moving train yes because there was a casualty which came like in the form of so uh, you know uh, suspension of the halt of the train at the rameshwaram station yes very good next question had he earned any money before that in what way so yes do you remember when the second world war broke out there was a sudden demand of tamarind seeds in the market yes so the answer is yes he had earned money before also he used to collect the tamarind seeds and sell them to a provision shop on the mosque street a day's collection would fetch him the princely sum of 1 anna the second part of the questions are that you have to answer each of these questions in a short paragraph okay the first question how does the author describe his father his mother himself so you have to tell that how does the author ap jabdul kalam describes his father so let's see for father first the author describes his father as honest and self-disciplined his father used to avoid inessential comforts and luxuries 
the author tells that his father never had a formal education or much wealth but he possessed great wisdom and was very generous so this was his feeling for his father let's see about mother the author apj abdul kalam describes his mother as being an ideal helpmate to his father she used to feed a lot of outsiders along with her family members now he is describing himself the author describes himself as a short boy with undistinguished looks born to tall and handsome parents the second question is what characteristics does he say he, he inherited from his parents okay so let's see what he has taken from his mother and father he says that he inherited honesty and self discipline from his father and faith in goodness and deep kindness from his mother so this was the end of the discussions of the questions that we have in our book and uh, we have formally ended the uh, chapter here i'm sure all of you have really enjoyed reading this chapter it's such a beautiful story of dr apj abdul kalam we'll meet in the next class till then bye and take care